I don't know what it is, but for some reason, people tend to misjudge me. And, you know, that's to be expected. It's the internet. And even when I leave the house, people are going to misjudge you anyway. But for some reason, and this has happened in real life, this isn't just Facebook and Instagram uh, and whatever social media that's out there, but it seems like people kind of misjudge me as being egotistical or arrogant or having some sort of superior superiority complex. And when really, I'm just being very passionate. I'm being very direct. I'm very confident at times. Uh, you know, I really believe in the things that I say. And I believe what I say is true because it's up to my knowledge. But when I am sharing my knowledge with you, that is a respect. That is a privilege. It's not because I'm superior to anybody, but that is literally me opening up my brain to you. I am taking knowledge from my brain and sharing it with you. Now, it's not like, oh, great and mighty Kelsey has shared for knowledge. No, it's not like that. It's like, that's a rarity. Like, that means that I, as an autistic person, am giving you a hug. I am embracing you with my knowledge. I'm saying I like you. I'm comfortable around you. Um, when I see you, I, I feel confident. And I'm confident enough to tell you, this is what I've learned. Isn't it exciting? I get to share this with you. And it's exciting when you get to share something new and then everybody's like, Ugh, my, you're so full of yourself. There's a difference between being confident and comfortable to being arrogant and egotistical. There's a difference. Arrogant and egotistical would mean it is a privilege to know me. It is a privilege for you to hear my voice and hear the knowledge from my massive brain. Now, sometimes it's not as out there. Like, ego, egotism and, and, and arrogance isn't always, like, out there. Sometimes it has disguises. It has disguises, you know. You'll have disguises. It'll be, like, it'll be very subtle things. You know, when you think of egotism or arrogance, or you, you think of somebody putting their nose up and going, hur, hur, you know, poo poo, you know, that kind of thing. Um, that's not always the case. Many people express their arrogance and their egotism in different ways. And so it's sometimes hard, and I can understand why people misjudge me, because it's sometimes hard to, to figure out where someone's coming from you can't see someone's soul or their heart or their mind right away so and especially when it comes to texting you have no idea what's behind those words unless you know them really well i mean when i know someone really well i know kind of what they're trying to say and i know kind of the intention behind it but even then there's some gray areas that you're not quite sure of because you know they could be saying oh i'm having a wonderful time ah. And they'll be like, oh, really? You have so am I. You know, you know, it could be like really, you know, uh, them being sarcastic. And so that's really hard. And you're not being able to see that person and see their face and, and their expressions. And, and you can't really feel that energy as when you have a text. So I understand. I understand why people misjudge me. Uh, does it bother me? Yes, it does. It bothers me. It bothers me that people profile me and, and assume that they know who I am. Uh, but sometimes I don't blame them. Other times I do because they're not... They are not open to new information. They're not willing to learn that perhaps I'm not a bad person. Perhaps I am actually somebody that is has good intentions. Now, not everybody has that outlook on life like I do. Not everybody sees people for their good. And believe me, that's been a disadvantage for me because sometimes I have, since I'm an empath, I feel certain uh, uh, energies. I feel people's emotions. Sometimes I look and look at a face and I can get a pretty good idea of what kind of person they are. 
but when I want to respect somebody and give them the help they need and, and be kind and see the good in them, sometimes I will ignore these instincts. I will ignore this, this empathic, this empath ability because I just want, I want to help. I want to be a good person and I want to see the good in that person. And yeah, but does that make it a weakness? No. No, 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 I, that doesn't make that a weakness. That just means I'm a positive person and I'm, I'd like, and I'd also like to give people a chance to, to be, to be respectful towards me. I'd like them to, to I'd like to have, give them a chance to maybe, maybe change, maybe, maybe grow, maybe get, um, you know, just evolve. You know, I want to be able to see that journey as well. But when I do not see that and I see them being destructive and, and hurtful and attacking me and other people, yeah, I have to withdraw. I can't allow people to res disrespect me. And, you know, a lot of people, because of this, you know, I've said no to many people and many people take that as a rejection. Especially guys, they're like, you know, why don't you say yes? And it's like, I can say no. I can say no. It's for my sanity. I can say no to anything that I want. I can say no to my doctor. I can say no to the government. I can say no to the woman that raised me. I can say no to everyone if I want because I'm my own independent being. And if I mess up and I do the wrong things and I screw up everything, guess who's to blame? Me. Me. I'm to blame. I'm to blame. And I'm more than willing to be accountable for my own actions. If I mess up, it's my fault. Am I going to go around and say that I was there? No, I'm not. I'm not going to. And so, you know, I. To a point, unless someone is, you know, emotionally or not mental, mentally or emotionally, Im not, you know, unless someone is emotionally and mentally immature, otherwise they're not capable of knowing what their actions are doing, they aren't able to put themselves in someone else's shoes because of maybe it's a special need, maybe it's a brain injury, you know, stroke, something like that, you know, there, there's a medical reason for it. Uh, you know, I'll let that slide. But that doesn't mean I have to put up with abuse. That doesn't mean that I have to put up with that person hurting me over and over again. No, no, no. A person could be, uh, you know, we make exceptions for people. We do. We make exceptions. We're like, well, they were having a bad day. Well, they were almost in diabetic shock. Oh, well, they're mentally ill. Oh, well, they're this. They're that. And I sound really, really like... This makes me sound like an asshole, but I'm going to say this. This might be an unpopular opinion, but mental illness, believe it or not, doesn't always have the capability of keeping you from being a good human being. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. Um, and sometimes it's really difficult to get help for the mental illness. I get that. I understand. I, I Getting help, getting medication in a lot of countries it's not easy it's not easy sometimes there is no help there's nothing and but mental illness is not an excuse for like consistent bad behavior especially if you're aware that your that your behavior is is affecting other people if it's hurting other people if you're aware of that um that's a choice it's not your mental illness now now, your mental illness can amplify certain toxic behaviors. Yes, 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 absolutely. Um, if you have trauma, it will amplify that. Autism will amplify toxic behavior as well, um, which is why there is both dark and light when it comes to anything that's mental. It can be a great advantage, it can be a disadvantage. It's not always consistently a great thing or consistently a, uh, a bad thing these neurological things can either make us or break us and depending on our mood and depending on what we're dealing with 
Uh, things can be a rose garden or things can be hell on earth. And I've tried to explain that to people that when it comes to the people who are committing crimes like serial killers, murderers, that kind of thing, rapists, is it what it comes down to is it is a spiritual uh, decision. It is something that is affecting them spiritually, their heart and soul. It is not just eating away at their brain. It is, it is eating away at their inner being. And yes, you mentally decide things, but also we constantly make excuses for the people that we love and the people that struggle with mental illness or, or some, something, that, something else that is neurodivergent. And to a point, yes, you can. You can say, well, they're not aware of what they're doing, no one told them any better, that kind of thing. But when it is a pattern and it is consistently that way, it's consistently, that is a sign of intelligence. That could also, it could mean that. It could just mean that they just don't have it. They can't find a way out of it, out of that cycle of pain. But it could also mean that they're aware of what they are doing. They are aware of what's going on. Now, if they're not aware of what's going on and they don't realize that the things that they say are affecting people, then yes, just let it slide. Just let it go. But I don't, I think within when people are murderers or they're rapists or, or, or you know, they commit crimes, is essentially, it is not just one thing, it's not just mental illness, it's not just trauma, it is mental, it is spiritual, it is, it is about trauma, and it's also their decisions that led them there, so it's a combination of things, it's also, also DNA, it's all that, it's not just one thing, it's not just one thing, so, and I do believe that a lot of these things were chosen. They were chosen. People chose these things. And other times, no, it wasn't chosen. Maybe they were made to do the things that they did. Maybe it's like a leather face scenario where, you know, they're abused and they are bullied into submission. You know, there, there's situations like that where a person is not potentially evil. And as I said, there are psychopaths out there that are to potentially, they are born that way. Or they are made. And I wish I could say this, like a lot of people have this misconception of like, well, they can't be born that way. Well, you're born with certain tendencies. You're born with certain mentality. You're born with a certain brain. Okay, and yeah, the experiences shape them, and sometimes these experiences can trigger whatever that was there. It could have been hiding there for a long time, and what some experience just triggers that. It's like it activates whatever that is that's in their brain. But really, do we really know what, what causes all of this? Because you can get somebody that has experienced the same, the very similar things, and they didn't end up being a serial killer. Because as I said, we are complex human beings. It's not just one thing that causes us to do things. It's not just one thing. There are often a series of things that lead us to do what we do. And no, you don't have to hold grudges and blame them forever and be angry against these people. But you can essentially just let go of the anger and realize, yeah, I'm not going to let this person hurt me anymore. That's, that's what forgiveness is about. Forgiveness isn't about, yeah, you totally s screwed up my life, but it's okay. No, what it's saying is what you did was not okay. It will never be okay. But I'm not going to let you control my life anymore. I'm not going to let you get me upset every time I think about you. I'm not going to let you hurt me consistently because if you don't let go of that anger, essentially that person 
whether they are dead or just really far away, they will always be with you. They will always live in your head rent free. And you don't want to do that. And it's a process. It's not something that's going to be easy, especially when you've had that person in your life for your entire life, you know, and you're just getting it, becoming your free, your own person. And then, you know, yes, you're going to have to fight that inner abuser. You're going to have to fight that parent, that, that sibling, that friend, that family member, that person that broke you. But eventually that voice will get fainter and fainter and you will be able to make your own decisions and you will be able to live a free and happy life and I don't have uh, any any judgments against people who have mental illness it is my belief that because you are mentally ill that does not mean you're crazy I don't believe that I don't believe I don't believe someone who has a memory issue is crazy I don't believe that someone is that that's the bias statement and I I shut down this one person who was saying yeah uh, my grandmother she thought there was a river on the side of the road and uh, she's crazy and I said buddy grandmother's not crazy that's called dementia and she probably has Alzheimer's and Alzheimer's is when the connections that lead to your hippocampus in other words the center of your brain your memory center the, where all the memories are stored essentially those connections can't reach there so what your brain does is it makes new connections but the connections don't work very well. So the connections go to other memories. So what do you do when uh, one, one connection is broken, another connection come, tries to repair the situation? Unfortunately, this is a bit like trying to build a bridge when there are no materials left. So it's like, okay, our bridge is broken here. Let's, let's, oh, oh dear. You know, it's like a bridge has, has fallen into the sea and you're expected to put it back together again from the broken pieces. And your brain is struggling with that. And it tries to, so when they are in a situation that they're not familiar with, they will bring up another memory, a memory that was probably from you know 50 years ago that's not hallucination that is memory misplacement that is con your b brain compensating so I shut him down I said yeah but it wasn't there I said I understand but hallucinations and delusions whether it's auditory or visual that's not what makes a person crazy what makes a person crazy is when they need help and they refuse to get it they refuse to admit that they need the help so they continue to be destructive that's crazy that's crazy you know what's crazy crazy people are usually the people that seem really sane they seem like they have it all together those are the people you be, should be concerned about. You shouldn't be concerned about schizophrenics or people with dementia. Yes, some of them can be violent and some of them can be, can be abusive and very I've known people that have been traumatized by that. But if you're gonna worry about crazy people, uh, worry about the people that you think have it all together. Yeah, worry about those people, worry about those people because there's a lot of mentally ill people. There's a lot of people with Alzheimer's. And I try to say this to people, and I'm saying this out of love because I don't believe that because you see things or hear things um, that I'm gonna treat you any differently. 
I'm going to treat you less like a human being. Honey, if you're seeing uh, images that are not there and are not there, they're real to you. They are real to you. You see them and you hear them. They are real to you. I might not be able to say them, see them, but they are real to you. Now, depending on what these vis visual and auditory hallucinations are doing, uh, maybe you're okay with them. Maybe you're all right with them. Maybe they don't disrupt your life. Um, and really, am I gonna sit there and I'm gonna tell you that you're crazy? Am I gonna treat, I'm not gonna treat you any differently. I might take, I might be a little bit more patient though. I'm gonna be a little bit more patient, a little bit more understanding and maybe, uh, now on the other hand, I don't have a medical background. I don't have, um, I don't have a doctorate. I'm, I'm not a psychiatrist or anything, so. I might have to take a step back if it gets to the point where that person is being abusive or they're being, <laughs> they're expecting me to to uh, take care of their medical needs. I might say, mm, uh, the, I'm not qualified for that. Um, I think you might need help elsewhere because I can't, I, I mean, that's just not right. That's not right for me to take over somebody who has a medical physician and you know I can't diagnose somebody I can't I can't write a prescription I can't I can't do any of those things but I can give help and support and love to that person that's all I can do I can help you go up the mountain but at, at no point can I carry you up there I'm not capable of doing that I'm not capable of carrying you up every mountain Eventually there's going to be a point, I'm going to point to you where you need to be and I will, I will walk with you up the mountain, but when it comes to it, there's going to be a point where you're going to have to, you're going to have to manage those mountains by, by yourself. And you're going to become a stronger person because of that. I haven't abandoned you, I haven't rejected you, I'm just saying that part of change, part of healing is you choosing to change and you choosing to heal and if somebody and I've had people like this where I've given encouragement and, and love and help to and they just weren't interested in, in accepting it they, they wanted to do their own thing and I was like okay well if you want to do your own thing you do your own thing but please don't bring your abuse to me please don't blame me when I was the one that was helping you. If you stumble and you fall, if you 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 fall off that mountain, that's not my fault. That's not my fault. I gave you the tools to climb up the mountain. I gave you uh, the advice of how you were supposed to how to climb the mountain, and it is your decision to do it, <laughs> to do these things. <laughs> And so there's only so much help I can give. Eventually, they have to they have to decide what they want to do with that help. And I know this sounds biased, but as I said, yes, there are certain exceptions with these things. Like sometimes, yes, mental illness can affect people to do this. Sometimes, yes, uh, there are, there's autism and such that makes them incapable of knowing what they're doing. There are sometimes, yes, there are mental disabilities that make people uh, emotionally and mentally immature and in that case yes that's cool um, that happens it's okay but if it is consistently where they're not accepting my help and they are being abusive and disrespectful towards me I have to take a step back that's what I have to do for my sanity um, and I, when I take a step back, I realize I did my best. I did what I could. I did what I could to make a difference in their life. And it hurts that they didn't accept my help. That it hurts that they, they won't realize that they are wonder, amazing people that can be, that can evolve and grow. But I did my best. I didn't abandon them. I was there. I was there. 
and when I take a step back, when I push the block button, when I I do that, it's for my sanity. Because I've had, there was a guy on Facebook that I had included many, many times. I had made sure that he was a part of my lives when I went on Facebook. I even invited him to a group that my friend had established that I was an admin for as well. And I, I, I texted him. Uh, I told him things and it seemed like there wasn't a lot of emotional response from him. Like when I would say, yeah, I uh, am sick right now. And he didn't say anything back. And that hurt a little bit, but I was like, wow. <laughs> and he, you know, uh, told me I was fake, told me that I pretty much, uh, you know, he, he thought that I was fake. And, and I, I, I don't know why I took the time to do this, but I said, hey, I've, in, I've invited you to these places, I've invited you here and there, and he was like, oh wow, sorry, sorry. So I decided to text my boyfriend for like five minutes, you know. And uh, he says, wow, you're ignoring me. You have no idea what it is to deal with this. You have no idea. I'm sorry for following you. I'm sorry for friending you. I am sorry that, I, that I'm bothering you. I was like totally, uh, he went from passive aggressive to completely aggressive. Um, you know, he went from th three to, an, to a nine. And I was just like, dude, I'm not ignoring you. I was doing something else. I could have said, yeah, it's my boyfriend. Uh, he's been through a lot of tough times with me and I think he has first fiddle, but I don't want to be that, that bitch. So <laughs> I said, okay. But when he said this, he didn't just put it on Messenger. He put it on Facebook underneath my profile picture. And it was the same thing word for word, which meant that he pasted it. He copied it and then pasted it on my profile 20 minutes later. Um, and I was just like, wow. And I said, look, I'm only one person. I can't do everything for you. And I know he was looking for a mother because he lost his mother. And I was like, I do know what you've experienced. I know how you feel. I've been through these things. So don't say that I don't, I don't know how it feels. I know what it is. And he's like, oh, I feel horrible. And I said, well, not as horrible as I feel right now. But when he said those things, he triggered me on so many levels. And I mean, a trigger, PTS trigger. I don't experience memories. Like, like some people are like, oh yeah, I experience the memory every time I hear or see or smell or do something. No, when I see an image or something that triggers me or somebody says something, I go back to how I felt in that moment. The dialogue, the, the things that were said, I just remember how I felt. So I was going through an emotional roller coaster. I was near to tears. I was angry. I was upset. I was sad because he was feeling this way, but I was also feeling my emotions of what I felt like when I had been traumatized. And I have never had anybody anybody trigger me in that way on that many levels and I could have explained to him I could have said please I am gonna block you but he had disrespected me and yes he was on the spectrum and I found out that a lot of people had been hurt by him and this one woman took the time to d explain to me this man this guy he does not know what he's doing he does not know he's being destructive he is not mentally and and emotionally mature and i know he manages his own facebook group his own facebook page but even then he is He's not aware of what he's doing. So when I, I thought about that, I was like, yeah, I didn't think about that. So I finally I admitted that I was like, oh yeah. Cause I was thinking to myself, I was like, if he can manage his own Facebook profile and he can paste 
messages on Messenger and his Facebook and my Facebook profile. I was thinking, surely he knows what he's doing. But surely, you know, he he's aware of what's going on. But then this woman was like, he has autism. He has autism. And it's being amplified by the trauma that he's experienced. By the grief of losing his mother. And it's hurting other people. And he expects too much from people. And I, I knew that immediately. Like when I was around him, I felt that there was this neediness. And when I feel someone's being too needy, I essentially withdraw. It kind of freaks me out because I've had a lot of people be needy towards me. They, they wanted something from me. They wanted me to, to listen to them, to hear them, to get things for them, to, to whatever. And it seemed, it, it seems like my entire life there's been somebody that has always wanted something from me or needed something. They didn't need it, they just wanted it. And I'm such a good person and I'm so kind and giving and loving that people took advantage of that. And I'm getting to the point where I'm not going to let people do that to me anymore. I will let you express yourself. I will let you be angry. I will let you be um, upset. But if you're going to use, you're going to have this trauma and this depression and, and this anger and you're going to throw it at me uh, as if it was my fault or my problem, I'm not down with that. You have ever, I, I had a guy say, I am depressed right now. And I was like, okay, I'm really sorry. So I tried to, so I tried to, you know, encourage him and, and help him out. I wasn't, I wasn't like Pinkie Pie or anything. I wasn't like, ha, you know, I, but I was like, and he says, I think I really need to feel this right now. I need to be depressed right now. I need to be sad. And I was like, okay. And he was honest enough to tell me that. Can you imagine how wonderful that would be if we just were honest, if we were just like, you know what? I'm really angry right now, I'm really upset, uh, but I want to feel this way. Can you imagine how that would be? That's why autism is so wonderful because it's not that it's superior to other people, but autism is awesome because they're honest. They're honest. When they say something, they really mean what they say. It's not... You know, sometimes we, we might, I might hide my emotions. I might, there might be things that I don't say because I don't want to hurt someone's feelings. But for the most part, if you're going to have some, you're going to ask me a question and ask me really what my opinion is, I will tell you if that is what you want. If you want me to tell you that, then I will. But then there also is a dark side to autism. There's the dark side of autism where literally um, uh, emotion, you know, trauma and toxic behaviors can be amplified by autism. That happens. And in that case, it can be more of a disadvantage. Um, some people will call it a curse because it amplifies the trauma that they've experienced. It amplifies some of the things that they don't want it to. Um, and that's hard. When you have autism and you want to change, that's really difficult. And I, I really sympathize and empathize with anybody who is going through a journey or a transition or is going through something where they can evolve and they can grow as a human being. I am totally supportive of that. And I love everybody unconditionally, without judgment. And if I ever sound judgmental or biased, it's probably because I've been hurt and I'm not looking at the situation as a whole picture. I'm not looking at the, the variables and the possibilities that, oh, maybe it's not because of this. Maybe it's because someone is treating me like this because something that they have experienced and it's not something that they're, they necessarily are in control of, you know? And it goes either way with mental illness, with autism, with either way. Sometimes it's a combination of the fact that they either choose it or they don't choose it. So life is complicated and people are complicated. And I'm not going to come up with a bias statement where it, it, it is 
either this or just that or it's all this and never that no there are possibilities within a mental illness and with a neurodivergency things can change uh things can change depending on the person depending the environment what they've been through their dna their parents their friends their family you know it all depends on that and it's not just one thing people aren't just one thing so that's why i try not to judge people because i realize there is dark and there is light there is darkness and there is sunshine there are many variables and and i don't believe that one person is completely uh i don't like to think that someone is completely beyond help or or, or hope and the best thing i can do is to do my best is to show them the light and they have to decide what they do with that and sometimes these things these behaviors are either a decision that they've made or it's something that they did not decide and I don't assume anything about anyone I do believe that there are certain things that there are not you know I don't think that everybody should excuse someone just because they have a certain mental a, a mental illness or a special need I don't think that they should be completely out of accountability but as I just said it depends on how emotionally and mentally mature they are and for the most part I'm just gonna let it go I'm gonna let it go whether they meant to or whether they didn't mean to it's not a big deal to me but what's a big deal is if they disrespect me or they disrespect someone else and they're consistently doing that and they need they the people need to withdraw from them because when you withdraw from someone you're telling them that I am not going to be your new source of negative energy I am not going to enable you I am not going to I, I I'm not gonna run myself ragged trying to help you because it's that yet again it's draining to me I've done my best you need to figure this out on your own I'm doing this because I love you I'm not doing this because I hate you or that I'm rejecting I'm doing this because for my sanity and for the sanity of others and I'm withdrawing from you that's all I'm doing regardless if you knew what you were doing or not you need to be able to know that there are consequences to the things that you do and hopefully consistently if people do this enough times you will find out that something needs to change and I really hope and pray that these people figure out how to change it's not easy I know it's not it's not easy to to, to change you gotta change everything heart soul mind spirit everything you gotta change you, you sometimes you have to be able to change your environment you have to move and do things and that's that's a huge struggle and i really hope for the best and when people when i block them it's not because i are hate you it's because i need you to know that i did my best and i can't do anymore I gave you 150 percent and I'll give you 200% but it's never going to be enough for you because you have not accepted my help so I'm not going to ride this this roller coaster of insanity with you I'm already on my own thank you so I'm going to get off at this point and uh, I hope <laughs> that you survive this roller coaster and I hope that you know in the future that there were people that cared about you and that loved you and that thought that you were important and precious and had value you are not any less of a human being because i blocked you you are somebody that should be helped and that's why i did that just know i i tried to help you I never abandoned you. I was there. 
and when I look at it that way then I don't feel so bad I don't feel so bad for blocking people so that's really that's really the main thing so um, I hope all of you have a beautiful blessed day and as I said these things can go either way so don't think that I am saying that things are black or white I know there are gray areas and I know there are people that can be both at one time and be be another at another time you know sometimes people are good most of the time and they're never they never have bad behavior. so you know it's it's just that's what I'm trying to say is I'm very accepting and supportive of anybody that has struggles whether it's mental emotional or spiritual and I don't treat anybody the way they, they treat me ever because treating them the way they treat me that's essentially getting at their level of immaturity I'm I am I am becoming who they are I am I am degrading myself and I don't want to do that I want to make an impression and I want to be able to say look I'm not gonna crouch down because you are abusing me and I'm not gonna meet you head on and challenge you and treat you like shit because that's how you made me feel I'm gonna be I'm, I'm going to evolve essentially and I hope that that will leave an impression on that person anyway that's all I wanted to say and uh, I hope this is up with someone <laughs>